So in this video, we're going to look at um, function composition when applied on the function and curry. Now, if you're a little bit rusty with function composition, I highly recommend watching my previous playlist on function composition in Haskell. And uh, that hopefully gives you a little bit more of, a, of, a, of an idea of what function composition is and what it actually does. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to first define the type signature. I'm going to find the type signature for the function composition operator. And the function composition operator simply says it takes in as a function, it takes in as a function, some function goes from A to B, which is my second parameter there. It then takes in as an input the first parameter, which is also a function, goes from B to a C. Okay, and it gives you back, it gives you back a new function. It gives you back a new function that basically is going from A to a C. Okay, now again, in my previous video, I've defined this mathematically where I have, where I can define this mathematically as F function composition G of X equals to G of X and F is applied on the entire thing. So you can think about, you can think about this piece over here, this piece over here, this function goes from B to a C belongs to belongs to the type signature for this f there and likewise you can think about this type signature that goes from an a to a b a function that goes from an, some type variable a to some some type variable b there belonging belonging to g okay and uh, this entire piece here the output you're doing two functions to get back a new function this new function to get back a that goes from a to c could be thought about this entire this entire piece there okay and um, again just to put things a little bit more clear there you can think about you can think about this a over there this a right this a or uh, this a over there because they both mean the same some kind of value that belongs to the same type variable is this is this is this value x this value x over here has a type it has a type associated that belongs to this a and um, and again, this entire thing, f of g of x, whatever this f of g of x has some kind of a type that happens to be, that happens to be this c there. Okay, so just kind of a quick one minute review on function composition. And um, now what I would like to do is, I would like to figure out, I would like to figure out what is, what is uncurry, uncurry function composition with, with uncurry. Okay. What is the type signature? What's the type signature going to be for this? Now, what I'm going to do is, before I actually do an entire type inference to figure out what is the type signature for this function, right? I'm going to make use of I'm going to make use of this this function. That's my first thing. That's the first thing I'm going to make use of. One is obvious because I'm using uncurry. I'm using uncurry as my functions f and g. This is acting as my f. That's acting as my g. And I'm doing f function composition with g there. And what I really want to do now is figure out the type signature for f or g, right? And uh, this entire piece over here, this entire piece over here is going to be my f o g. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of, I'm going to make use of my, my, my function composition operator. Okay, so to put this a little bit more, I mean, just start a little bit of kind of an informal approach here. What the function composition operator does, it takes in as a function some uncurry, okay, which happens to have that type signature there. So, so let's do that. Let's try to say the first, the, the, the kind of this innermost function there, this innermost function here, uncurry, right, which happens to be in this case uh, g, and this g over here belongs to, belongs to a function that goes from an a to b. So I'm just going to write that entire function as, uh, as uh, using this type signature. So this is going to be a to b to c which in turn gives you back the uncurry function that goes from a tuple of a comma b giving back a c okay this is what this is what this piece is okay so this the type signature for this entire piece this entire piece over there is this thing okay now what's the type signature for for this function f the uncurry well, they're the same thing. So I'm going to say, let me kind of do a different color there. I'm going to say that uh, that uh, this is going to be some function. So I'm going to write that piece over here. So let's just use different notations there. So I'm going to say this is a function that goes from x, y to a c, and gives you back 
some because remember all these x y and z and these a b and c are my type variables okay it gives you back some some c guy okay now what's important here is that this piece this piece is the input this piece this piece over here is my input is my input to the function okay so this so whatever is f o g whatever is the input to this function f o g is this is this box there okay and whatever is the output of f o g right whatever is the output that you get back is this 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 uh, is this final piece that's over here okay that's the that so this is the this is kind of think about it very informally kind of the input into my function f o g and this is kind of the output that you get back the output that you get back from your f o g now what i know from a function composition is that same idea this a over here this a over here this, this a over here is basically this entire box there right? this entire box is acting as my a it gives you back some value of type b which is this value of type b and you have this new function that um, takes as an input some type b which is this this b there which means something interesting here that whatever is the type for this piece in this pink box must be identical must be identical to to that pink box over here these types must match up they must match up now what should i do to get these types matched up okay so uh, again just to make things a little bit more clear this a there this a there okay this a over here represents this entire a okay this b that you get back this b over here on the function composition operator remember i'm not going to okay first thing don't confuse this a with that a there so this just to put things a little bit more clear i'm going to say that a1 b1 a1 c1 c1 i'm just going to put a subscript where i'm saying b1 c1 and so forth just to differentiate these a b c's that are in my function composition operator so this entire piece this entire piece over here is my a1 this entire piece over here, this, this pink box over here, is actually is actually my my B1. Okay? And likewise, this piece over here, this piece over here must also be must also be my B1. And likewise, this box over here, which is the output, must be must be my my C1. Okay, so B1 and B1, whatever is this value, whatever is this value, they get back in this box here, must be completely identical, meaning the types must match up. How do you get the types matched up? So I'm going to take this a comma b, a comma b, okay, whatever was in the first pink box, okay, and I'm going to rewrite, and I'm just going to take the second uh, uh, pink box over here, which has x, y, z, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that can be re re kind of just writing it again, but we can remember everything over here is equivalent to saying just by using current, I can put my parentheses there, so I'm just going to line up, I'm just going to line up. Y C. So this means that this piece over here, this piece over here lines up nicely with my X. The C over there lines up nicely with my with my Y C. Okay. So whenever I see an X now, whenever I see an X now, well, that can be replaced. That can be replaced with a tuple of a comma b. And likewise, whenever I see a C, you could replace a C with either a function that goes from Y to a Z, or if you see a function that goes from Y to a Z, that can replace a C. They're just they're just equivalent now, right? These these this tuple. That contains a value of these types of a and b it's completely equivalent to this x there okay so i'm just getting these, these types completely matched up now okay so what is the type signature of uncurry function composition with uncurry as an input as an input you take in a function goes from a to a b to a c right but what i'm saying now is that wherever you see wherever we see this uh uh wherever we see this a right wherever we see this a so this this is a, this is a function that goes from a to a b to a c. Now wherever I see a c there, wherever I see a c, I'm going to replace that. I'm going to replace wherever I see a c with a function that goes from y to a z. So let's let's just do this in this uh, in this box here. So let's come back a little bit away. Let's just kind of draw things separate uh, things out. Okay, all right. And um, this piece over here, this piece over here, I'm going to say is nothing but a to a b. And now instead of writing C there, I'm just going to write this piece Y to a Z. Okay, I'm just going to write Y to a Z. Okay, so you provide in some value that happens to have that type signature. Okay, that goes as an input to F or G, meaning this is an input. This is an input to uncurry function composition with uncurry. As an output, 
Okay, as an output, what do you get back? There's this box there. There's this box there. Which is, which is, remember, you're getting back as an output A1 to C1. This is your input, A1. As an output, you get back C1, right? This C1 is this, is this, is this box there. So remember, again, don't forget that uh, this A1 here is this entire piece. This entire piece over here is my, is my A1. Right, and as an output, you get back some value of type C1. Some value of type C1. That C1 is basically this box there, right? This box there, C1. So, what's that going to be now? Well, I have this. I have this couple of x comma y, right? I have this couple of x comma y. But I just said whatever we see, whatever we see, and whatever we see, an x there, that's going to get replaced. That's going to get replaced with this tuple of a comma b. So, if I see an x there, if I see an x there. I'm going to replace that. I'm going to replace that. So let's put my parentheses. Replace the x with a couple of a comma b. Okay, and uh, and then I have a comma y. I have a comma y, and then finally, finally I have my function. My 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 arrow. My arrow there. So this is this is my arrow. I wish I had some more space there, but that's okay. I have my arrow. And finally, what I have here is basically is basically C. Okay, so what uncurry function composition uncurry does, it basically takes in this function, goes from an A to a B to a Y to a Z. This is a completely a curried curried representation of a function, and it simply uncurries it so that now A and B is collected in a tuple, which in turn has an outer tuple where Y is collected as a second parameter. On it out of tuple, and then finally you get back some value of type C. So let's just uh, quickly double check this uh, in Haskell, and uh, so I'm just going to open up my terminal here, and um, let's first quickly define define uncurry, so uh, so that we can see a definition of uncurry. I believe. Uh, let me just put my screen this way, and uh, okay, this is a little bit better. Yeah, this is good. So I'm just going to take my uncurry's definition that's right there, and uh, we're going to say let uncurry of f of x comma y equals to equals to f of x y. Okay, and I can see the type of uncurry is basically is a function that takes in some function that goes from t1 t2 to t. That's exactly my function over that goes from A, B to C. Remember, A, B, C, T1, T2, T are just type variables, right? So when I see an A, B, C there, it just refers to T1, T2, and T, which in turn gives you back a function that has the first parameter as a tuple of A, comma B. That's a function that has the first parameter, a tuple of T1 and T2 there. And then finally, and finally, you have the T there. Now, of course, I have my parentheses there, but if you were to apply parentheses here, it will simply be applied on the entire thing. So it's exactly the same thing that I had earlier on my slide, uh, on my, on my blackboard there. Okay, now, what's the type signature for function composition? So the type signature for function composition is, basically, it takes in as an inner function goes from A to B, and it takes in as a second function that goes from, in this case, uh, B to a C, that's the outer function, and it gives you back a new function that goes from an A to a C. And uh, I believe this is exactly what we had over here, right? A function that goes from P1 to C1, A1 to P1, A1 to C1, and that's exactly what you have there. Now, what is the type signature? What's the type signature for uncurry? Uncurry. The type signature for uncurry is basically the speed set. And um, let me just open up my drawing utility. So we can do this a little bit more cleanly. And uh, okay, so let's see. Oops, I don't need that. Okay, okay, there you go. Okay, so let's do this over here. And let's see what I have so far. Okay, so let's use red. Red is a little bit nicer color. And um, what I have is this T1, T1, T3, T2, and T. And um, what I had here was A, B, Y, and Z, right? So whenever I see, whenever I see A, B, Y, and Z, I'm just going to put, uh, I'm going to replace my T1s as A, B, Y, and Z. 
So now I have T1, T3, well T1 is acting as my A on my blackboard there, T3 is acting as my B, T2 is acting as my as my Y, and T is acting as C there. So you can see exactly that's exactly what I got on my on my blackboard. I had a tuple of A comma B, which is this tuple right there. Right? Which is the first parameter in this out tuple that has the second parameter Y. Okay, so the second parameter y in this new tuple, in this outer tuple there. And it finally gives you back uh, as an output this entire this entire function that takes in this 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 outer tuple gives it back as a value, some value of type t, and this type variable t is acting as z on my on my on my blackboard there. So I've exactly the same thing. So what whatever this deduction that I did here, this deduction I did here to get my type signatures matched up. It matches, it matches everything over there. Okay. Now, as an example, what I want, what I want you to do is do the same thing, but do curry function composition with curry. Can you figure out the type signature for curry dot curry? Okay. Thank you.